Resortlube.com is proudly sponsored by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. Look for Joffrey's kiosks throughout the Walt Disney World theme parks. This holiday season, visit Joffrey's.com for a variety of specialty coffee gifts, featuring mugs, their new coffee variety gift sets, and the brand new Jingle Jangle Java flavored coffee with vanilla mint flavor and smooth chocolate and nutty notes only at Joffrey's.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. As you board, please move across your car to make room for everyone. Hey everybody, welcome to a winding down of Resort Loop's uh, Holiday Thon 2015. I'm your host, Bob Collar. Tim Scott is uh, prepping for our uh, end of year shows, our last two episodes, the last episode of uh, 2015 and the very first episode of 2016 that will round out this marathon holiday thon <laughs> 2015 but uh i thought we'd take an opportunity my son is joining me today hello bobby hello dad uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh and we we are going to talk about uh the uh, star wars force awakens with no spoilers so uh mm-hmm. don't turn off your uh your listening device if um if you haven't seen the movie yet if you have seen the movie yet uh, we're not going to delve into uh, what we think of uh, the plot line, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. other than to say uh, we thought the I thought the film was amazing. Uh, Bobby, what did you think of the film? I think that, I mean, my favorite is Return of the Jedi. Uh, it doesn't beat Return of the Jedi, but it's probably my second favorite. Uh, Star Wars out of the six. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, what we will say is, um, of course, uh, we know that there's going to be another one out in May mm-hmm. of uh, of 2017. They're uh, they're going to be starting um, filming on that in the next couple of weeks. It's it's the filming wow. starts in January. So they're keeping all of the actors fresh, very similar to uh, Lord of the Rings kind of thing and uh, and the Harry Potter films, so that uh, you know the actors don't uh, don't age when it's supposed to be just a, a follow up. Um, the film itself <laughs> just hit worldwide; just hit uh, over a billion dollars made worldwide. Wow. Um, one of the few films to do that. It's only been out a, f- a couple of weeks and a uh, billion dollars worldwide. We've seen the film twice. Uh, it's over a half a million, half a billion dollars um, just in the States alone. So uh, it's, it's going to be big. I mean, uh, uh, Bob Iger told J.J. Abrams this is a $4 billion film because that's what they paid for the Star Wars franchise. And uh, that's certainly... Uh, J.J. Uh, Abrams came through. He did a great <laughs> job on this film. Yeah. Uh, looking ahead to 2017, J.J. Abrams is not the director for uh, for the next Star Wars uh, Episode Eight. Which I'm going to just I'm going to make a prediction right now. I'm going to say that they may they may grab J.J. Abrams and say, you know what, we, we're going to we're going to use you uh, because the guy that they're using uh, and. Uh, I don't have any issues with uh, uh, Ryan Johnson, but uh, he hasn't done a whole lot as far as blockbuster films like J.J. Abrams has done. He did do uh, uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, only three episodes of Breaking Bad, though. Uh, he did do the movie Looper back in 2012, which is kind of apropos for uh, this show because mm-hmm. we are a Looper Nation. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, by the way, Looper and uh, Looper Nation, nothing <laughs> nothing in, in common there so don't don't think you're going to watch that movie and, and see a disney film uh, uh, absolutely um and then uh you know a few other um you know lesser known films I, i'm i'm not real familiar with ryan johnson but uh we'll see if um bob Iger sticks with him well i uh i'm not sure if this is true but i heard around the web that it was a very shaky kind of alliance between Disney and J.J. Abrams. Right, With him right. directing uh, Star Wars and all that. I remember him saying uh, that he actually wasn't going to do it at first, but then the person who was trying to hire him said, what happened to Luke Skywalker? And J.J. Abrams just had to know, so that's why he did it. Oh, okay. Well, you know, um, 
uh, and two, JJ's a big uh, he's a big director. He may have um, you know bigger fish to fry. Maybe he's got other contractual things that he has to do. But yeah, there's uh, the new Star Trek uh, movie that's coming. Right, out soon. right, that's coming out. So, uh, uh, by the way, we and these are not spoilers. We're not again. We're not going to do spoilers. But uh, getting back to uh, the Force Awakens, there's some big stars in the Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're just going to leave it at that. There's some big stars you never see. So some of you out there already probably know who we're talking about, but uh, we're going to leave it at that uh, <laughs> because it's kind of cool uh, that uh, there were some big names that said, hey, we want to be in this film, and uh, but we don't want necessarily you know need to be seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they are in the film, and it's very cool how uh, J.J. put them in there and, and made that happen. Uh, but again... Going back to Force Awakens, I thought phenomenal show or phenomenal film. Uh, Harken back to, for me back to uh, the original Star Wars Episode Four. Um, of course, and again, we're just going to talk about things that you may have seen in trailers, so you know that there are scenes, desert scenes, yeah, uh, very similar to Tatooine. Mm-hmm. Um, very cool how uh, how that all plays out. Uh, this the um, actors, the new actors. I gotta say, I was thrilled with their performances. Uh, Kylo Ren, the bad guy in this thing, I wasn't too sure after the first um, time we saw it. Now the second time we saw it, uh, he's he does a great job. Yeah, because you pick up on things like just, for example, just the way he talks and like. There's, like, definitive features about Kylo Ren that makes him the kind of person that you'd think he'd be. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, we're going to need, we're going to need out of uh, Episode 8 a lot of backstory because there's a lot of stuff that happens that, uh, that we don't get the backstory to. Um, great to see Han Solo and Chewbacca back. Mm Mm-hmm. It's very cool how they uh, how they get back on the Millennium Falcon. How that all happens. How that all plays out. Very very cool. Uh, and I noticed Chewbacca had a bigger role in this one than he did in the original trilogy. Uh, Chewbacca was hilarious. Yeah. He had some of the yeah. funniest lines, if you will. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> as much as Chewbacca can have lines, um, but I thought Chewbacca was fantastic. He was very funny, very, uh, he was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, Harrison Ford, Han Solo, uh, his great one-liners. Yep. Uh, the interaction between him and, and uh, Chewie were fantastic. Uh, loved that. And uh, the, But I, I got to tell you, the breakout star for me in the whole thing, BB-8. I like BB-8, but I think the craze about him... Like, he'll never be an R2-D2. Oh, or she. Wow. Uh, wow. We aren't really sure right. What if droids even have gender. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. But uh, just the personality that they were able to give BB-8 That's true, yeah. was fantastic, I thought. Yeah. I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, great to see the original cast. Uh, makes me feel old, seeing how old they are. <laughs> i got to be honest. Um but uh, but very excited for the next one to come out. We've already seen this one twice. Do you think we'll go back and see it again? Uh, well, I know I'm probably going to see it with my uh, friend Daniel. He lives right, right across the street. Um, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah. back to the next one, uh, you said that there's going to be a lot of flashbacks. Uh, I think that it's more going to be an Empire Strikes Back where the backstory is just kind of explained through dialogue rather than hmm. actually showing. Because remember in um, Empire Strikes Back, Obi-Wan, or more like Ben, uh, right. tells yeah. Luke that Darth Vader is his father. Mm-hmm. Not really a big spoiler now. The movie's right. been out. <laughs> yeah, if you, haven't, if you don't know that by now, that's... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like he explained most of what happened uh, to Luke... Uh huh. Just through mm-hmm. dialogue and through the plot on Dagobah, so I think they're going to try at least try to replicate that in the next one. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, they might just use dialogue to uh, yeah. to get that point across. I would like to see. Um, I, I don't know. I would like to see some flashbacks. I would like to see some uh, 
uh, the backstory really developed. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because the characters you're going to find when you when you see the film, the characters need there are there are certain characters that are definitely going to need that backstory. Yeah. Um, and uh, but these these uh, new characters that they have in Ray, the girl, Finn, um, the uh, the young uh, young Story. man, and uh, and uh, uh, of course Kylo Ren. Those three, um, brilliant job. I think they did a great job, and I think um, uh, I, I can't wait to see what their backstory is, how we get them, and I certainly hope that they really develop them in the next uh, in the next film. Um, just it, it's just a beautiful film. The the, mm-hmm. the one of the problems that that uh, George Lucas had was when he went back and he just plugged in all that CGI. Oh yeah, the, in the original the prequel trilogy. Oh, well, wait, even you the mean original. For the yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Going yeah, with the yeah. Blu-ray and and the things he plugged in, it was so perfect the first time. But he didn't have the technology to to put in the things that he envisioned, and I think that took away a little bit from yeah. from the movie. Yeah. This one was very similar to I think the the original three four five and six where it wasn't as much i mean there was some beautiful cgi don't get me wrong yeah, but it wasn't like gunked up by it but there it wasn't, wasn't an overload wasn't of in your face right yeah. right yeah. um many of you will be very happy to know no jar jar banks <sighs> i mean i would have <laughs> loved to see Kylo Ren take off his mask in two no. fish years, plop no. out. <laughs> All right, there's a spoiler. Just, I, <laughs> Kylo Ren is not Jar Jar Binks. So don't, I, I would have you know. just, I would have been mad. Don't think that I, I would be terribly, terribly mad. But at the same time, I would be just laughing my head off. Right. right. But no, there is no Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. To screw yeah. with. Uh, with the original trilogy fans like you and me <laughs> are you looking forward to because disney obviously they've they've held off in star wars lands uh to put in a lot of the new trilogy stuff that we're gonna see um are you looking forward to having that stuff in the the new rides and the new attractions at the disney parks uh yes and no because, mm. yeah, because the New Order is, like, really cool looking. Mm-hmm. The, stor- the new mm-hmm. Stormtroopers are cool looking. It'd be cool to visit the exotic locales that are in the movie and planets and things of that nature. Right, right. But then it would also, in a way, kind of contradict the uh, original trilogy by having it in the same ride. Because then one time you ride, it's going to be normal stormtroopers mm, yeah. and Darth Vader, and then the next time it's going to be Kylo. Well, they Ren. are already doing that. They're talking about in the uh, in the Star Wars uh, rides at, at the parks. They're going to incorporate because it's a different ride every time you ride it. It's That's something true. different. That's true. So uh, you may get on, and you might be um, you know uh, doing battle in a in a Force Awakens uh, setting. Yeah, uh, or uh, you know, running from Kylo Ren. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be very interesting. We know that uh, the new Star Wars land is going to have uh, some new uh, Sith to fight, and oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, the Jedi Academy is just going to be <laughs> going crazy <laughs> with all of the stuff that's going to be going on there. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Um, thrilled that the movie's doing extremely well i think that uh, it's well deserved it's not a bunch of hype that uh in a lot of a lot of cases it's not deserved i think that um jj abrams did a great job uh, disney did a great job with it by allowing um you know the lucas lucas films to really do what they do best which is put out fantastic uh, star wars movies so Mm -hmm. um i think they hit a home run it's getting great reviews um, from a lot of people that don't give great reviews. <laughs> yeah, and The Force Awakens, um, or, well, the new trilogy, as it's going to be called mm-hmm, soon, mm-hmm. when it becomes a trilogy, uh, those are not the only Star Wars movies that we have to look forward to. What's the other one? Because there is a movie called Rogue One, which mm. they haven't really released a lot of stuff about it, but 
I assume it's going to be about um, just the rebel uh, cause and the struggle to right. fight the New Order right? Uh, and things of that nature. And there's going to be a Han Solo uh, standalone movie telling his backstory in either 2017 or 2018. Ah, very good. There you go. Yeah. My young Padawan. <laughs> Letting us know what's coming down the pike for uh, Star Wars. Very going to be a, a lot like the Marvel uh, universe that Disney has created. This new Star Wars universe is just going to be just gangbusters, and uh, I I think they're going to do well. I know a lot of people were nervous with Disney taking over this whole Star Wars uh, franchise, uh, much mm-hmm. like they were when when Marvel took over. I was very excited by it, just because of what they did with Marvel. And uh, I think that um, I think we've got some fantastic stuff coming from uh, uh, Star Wars. Uh, mm-hmm. And with the cliffhanger year. at the end, oh, I'm excited to see oh, how everything pans out in oh, the second cliffhanger one. at the end, folks. Cliffhanger, huge, like- huge, huge. Just uh, don't. Uh, and again, that's we're not going to give any spoilers. But uh, just very excited to uh, mm-hmm. to see how this all plays out. Mm-hmm. Listen very carefully. You're going to hear some old uh, old friends uh, just in uh, just their voices. Yes, in, listen in a, very I, carefully. I am going to give. Hey, I, I am going to give a spoiler. I am going to give a spoiler. Okay. All right. So it, this is everybody. Calm down. Don't turn off. Don't turn off your <laughs> your listening devices. This is not a big spoiler. There is a hidden Mickey. In the oh, film, yeah. there is a hidden Mickey. You see it one time and one time only, and that's in the cantina. Yes, they go back to a cantina. They have to have a cantina. But it's a cantina, not it's, the cantina. It's a cantina. It's a whole different uh, cantina, and it's very cool. And uh, it's it's uh, it, it's on the table. I'm just going to say that. Look for the hidden Mickey on the table. It has to be. A, I know that everybody's going to say, ah, that's not hidden. I'm telling you, I think it's a hidden Mickey because you see it one time and you never see it again. And yet they, you, you still see the table. So I think it's a hidden Mickey. I'm going to go with that. And that's that's the only spoiler I'm giving. I didn't see it. So I, I know you didn't I see it. Say I was looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anything else you want to add to uh, Star Wars uh force awakens uh it was a great movie uh it was great seeing my favorite character in it uh it was just i was very i was happily i was eh. i was very surprised but in a good way yes yes because reintroducing something as old as star wars and star wars has a special place in everybody's heart somewhere but introducing something like that, it's very easy to make people angry by screwing it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even the slightest bit. Yep. But they just went classic Star Wars. Yep. Just They tried to replicate the original trilogy, and I believe they did a fantastic job doing that while introducing new concepts and new plots uh, in the process. Absolutely, absolutely, and I will say this: I there are very few movies I can't. Uh, maybe Jaws um, is one of those movies, but very few movies where you hear audible gasps out of people, and you will hear that <laughs> yeah. in this movie several times. There are audible gasps from the audience uh, mm-hmm. that are seeing it for the first time. I noticed it the second time we went because we knew what was gonna, coming. And I was waiting to hear uh, how people reacted to certain things in the movie, and it is—it's impressive. I started openly laughing, just not—not not because I thought anything was comical or anything like that, but I just started opening openly laughing at the opening text scroll of Star Wars: The Force Awakens, just because of how happy I was <laughs> seeing Star Wars. Yes. Again, and this yes. time for the first time, because I just watched the original trilogy, right? And yeah. I didn't have to wait for anything. Yeah, but seeing yeah. it just for the first time, I just started laughing. Seeing the yeah. opening text scroll, that music, and the music—you'll hear the music throughout the film. Um, they did. I they didn't overuse the music, which I I kind of yeah. liked. Yeah, um, you know, they had their own music. It's got its own sound to it, which is very good. 
Uh, but uh, you still get some of that John Williams interspersed, uh, you know, the original mm-hmm. Star Wars theme music in there, which just, oh, man, it just, it does. It pulls at yeah. you because yeah. you it, it means so much to you when you hear it. So, um, so uh, Bobby, anything else about Star Wars Force Awakens? Uh, I suggest that anybody who is watching this that has access to a movie theater or eventually a Redbox or Netflix watch this movie as soon as humanly possible yeah. because you will love it i guarantee you yeah i i think you gotta see it on the big screen yeah uh, it's gonna be fine i mean you you know we've got surround sound here at the house and then you know a decent size uh hd tv but it's mm-hmm. not gonna be the same you gotta go see it at the theater and uh, and enjoy it in that uh huge surround sound that they're they're using there so yeah. um but uh well uh, that is all i've got uh, as we always say you know where to find us on the social media thank you all for uh, uh tagging along on this holiday thon with us and um uh, we you know hope you all had a very very merry christmas and a happy holiday um uh, all of the holidays that are celebrated and uh also Please be careful. We know that uh, New Year's Day's, uh, New Year's Eve's coming up. Please be careful on the streets and and mm-hmm. uh, take care of yourselves and uh, watch out for everybody else. We hope you have a fantastic uh, New Year's Eve and hope you listen to our New Year's Eve show uh, coming up tomorrow, where we uh, little teaser. I am going to give a teaser. We review 2015. Kind of like we always do. So, <laughs> anybody, anyway, everybody, uh, thanks for listening. You have been listening to uh, the Gateway to the Magic. See you, everybody. This really isn't about recapturing what we did before. It's about you know making that jump to hyperspace into the future and uh, the new generation of villains and heroes. Well, happily, this has been the kind of family film that that gets passed on uh, from mothers and fathers to their kids, and that's been great for Star Wars. It's also been great for me. Really grateful. Thank you.